My teacher used to say, he used to say very boldly, Kunjaji used to say, <laughs> no one is happy. It <laughs> is a bold statement. It was bold. You know, it was very bold, and it could be construed as a kind of unpopular thing mm -hmm. to say. But I thought it was amazingly and radically true that somehow this human animal is designed with a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so let's give that its due. There is a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And in a time of increasing pressure on the resources, um, and that we who've been in, in unbelievable privilege for so long, even we now are confronted with um, different types of anxiety and worry that we haven't heretofore known, um, that, that we have to give the arising of anxiety its due we don't have to shut it out and make it um, somehow um, scary, but we can, in fact, have a coexisting calm that is deeper. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, in my own case, I I sometimes have anxiety arise. Mm -hmm. I have uh, worry about certain difficult things in my life. Uh, my father, for instance, his mm -hmm. health and lots of things actually <laughs> um, and not to mention the world um, but um, you know I there's a coexisting calm in my in the depths of my being I liken it to thinking of oneself as an ocean and in the depths of the ocean in the deep deep waters of the ocean it's perfectly still mm -hmm. we can imagine how calm and still and silent it is in the deepest parts of the ocean, unfathomable depth. And on the surface, there can be tsunamis, mm -hmm. storms, you know, all kinds of, mm -hmm. of wild activity, right? Mm -hmm. Hurricanes and so on. On the surface, there can be all this movement. But in the depths, it's very calm. And if you begin to think of yourself in this way, that in the deep waters of your being, it's very calm. Mm -hmm. And that you can, you know that even though the storm is on the surface, it's going to pass and, and that the awareness can then just sink down to its calm. Or that you can have part of your awareness still in the calm, mm -hmm. even though part of your awareness, mm -hmm. you know, and even perhaps in an alternating way, in a quick mm -hmm. alternation, is in the storm a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you acclimate to the quiet, mm -hmm. as you acclimate to the depth, you discover that it's actually very um, easy mm -hmm. to have this coexisting mm -hmm. awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that it's not something that's hard to figure out. It's actually very easy. Mm -hmm. And it's just like when you're in a movie theater. Even though it's there's a lot of action on the screen that's causing your heart to race or causing you to feel all kinds of emotions, there is nevertheless enough calm and clarity and coexisting awareness that knows that you're sitting in the theater. Otherwise, you'd get up and run out at the first sign of trouble. But you know you're in the theater. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, you can be watching the events of life and all the various stresses and worries and etc. that we're privy to in the world of information. Um, you can watch it and watch whatever emotional storm it might create. At the same time, you can know that you are perfectly mm -hmm. fine in your depths. Mm -hmm. if that's your actual sanctuary, your only real sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Your sanctuary is not in the changing circumstances mm -hmm. of this world. Mm -hmm. Your sanctuary is in your ability to flow and in your ability to stay mostly in these deep waters. Yes. Staying in my beauty, go back to what Sia wrote, kind of touches on what we were talking about on Wednesday. At Dharma about, Dialogues. Yes, yes. And letting that beauty be what it is, whether it's in the sadness. Yes. Yes. Or even in the longing. Yes. Or to really be authentic to yes. oneself. That's so to beautiful. To be really true to yourself, be genuine. Mm -hmm. And yet, obviously not 
cling on and I'd be identified with any particular component. You know, some people, let's say, are more anxious than others for whatever reasons, whether it's their biology, how they were raised, just whatever. I mean, sometimes you even see in families one kid will be very, very calm and the other very hyper and, and anxiety ridden, even though they're being raised by the same parents. So you just don't know. There's, there's no real, you can't control these things. Um, so even someone who is a more anxious type can really understand that and love him or herself through it and not demand that somehow with some silly spiritual notion, you know, I'm going to end up, if I only understood properly and I have this experience, this big radical Satori, uh, then I'll not be an anxious mm -hmm. person anymore. I won't have anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's not so. Mm -hmm. It's just not mm -hmm. so. You will have, if you're inclined in that direction, conditioned that way, you will likely continue to have anxiety mm -hmm. arising. But in this understanding, you know that this is not your identity. This is not your primary identity. You are, you are a multi-faceted diamond, you know, and this is one component of the diamond. You don't have to identify with any of it, you know, that you just let it all be in a kind of free expression. And as I say, being very authentic in it, um, but not reduced to any component. You see people who've been strongly identified, whether it's uh, with their strength, mm -hmm. and then strength fades. Mm -hmm. Now who that? Who are they, mm -hmm. right? Or it's their brain, their brain power. Brain power fades. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. people get more and more, frankly, doddering mm -hmm. as they get older. If they <laughs> live long enough, mm -hmm. brain power fades. Beauty, mm -hmm. God, that's a short mm -hmm. run. Uh, beauty fades, although that's a, an extraordinary power while it's lasting. It's, it's a, you know, a brief flicker in time. Um, and so on. All these different components, people identify with different, you know, uh, aspects of themselves. They get strongly identified. And then as that aspect starts to fade, they're left with, well, who am I? actually you know and i recommend find out that who am i <laughs> that deepest place of beingness that requires no identification because it's already occurring it doesn't need the identification to be propped up and when you're resting as that you're just home free and you know one minute you're wearing one kind of hat you know you have great brain power or you're beautiful or you're uh, talented in some way or you're a long distance runner or whatever it is and the next minute that's gone but you're not confused about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you knew you were just wearing a temporary